Welcome to a new home for hope. Tonight, you're going to get the very first look inside Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital. It's a state-of-the-art facility, and you're going to be the first to see it right now. It is the only level one pediatric trauma center in all of central Pennsylvania. Here to tell us a little bit more about this wonderful facility is Dr. Craig Hillemeyer, and he is the chair of pediatrics. Uh, first and foremost, this is the only freestanding children's hospital in all of central PA. What does that mean to the community? It's really very important when a child is seriously ill, Amy, for that child to be able to stay close to their home, close to the social network of support that they have in the community in which they live. We've been able to provide that care here at Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital for quite some time, but with this new building, we're going to be able to allow the utmost of care to be given in the most advanced care facility possible. It's really important that we're going to be able to use these, this facility with the wonderful staff and faculty that we have to make the experience for the patients and their families the highest possible in terms of quality and the experience that they have. What is the difference in taking your child to a regular community hospital versus this new facility? That's a really good question, Amy. We have really good relationships. and In fact, we have outpatient clinics in virtually every region of central Pennsylvania. And we work very closely with the providers in those regions so that when their children have to have the most advanced care when they're seriously ill, that we're able to use the facilities here at Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital. We have well over a hundred board certified specialists in pediatrics from surgical, medical, general pediatric care throughout the gamut, something that many of the communities in central Pennsylvania just can't make happen and we're able to have those facilities available for them when they need them. What is the timeline looking for in terms of when patients will be actually moved into this new facility? We're very excited. We're looking forward to having patients here in early January, which is gonna be a tremendous event. Has this been an exciting or stressful process? <laughs> I guess both. This has been the dream of people here for decades, yeah. and it's been a lot of fun to work with the whole team of staff and faculty that we have here at the Children's Hospital to make this happen. It has to make you very proud to see the work and all of it start from beginning to end. It's really very gratifying and very exciting. All right, well, we thank you very much for your time, uh, Dr. Craig Hillemeyer. Penn State Hershey Medical Center has been treating children since 1971, but this new facility will provide patients, their care caretakers and family with a more comfortable and modern treatment approach. A lot has changed in 41 years since the seventh floor at Penn State Hershey Medical Center was first dedicated to caring for sick children. Kids like Samantha, who suffered brain trauma after being hit in the head by a tree branch and given no hope at another hospital. The doctor thought I'll never, never live, but look at me now. I did live. They told us that she was going to die, um, but when we came here, they didn't just focus on Sammy, they focused on the whole entire family. Advances in medicine, technology, and strategy on how best to treat young patients now outgrows a single floor at Penn State Hershey. Construction on a new five-story freestanding children's hospital is complete. Inside, services to treat children under one roof, including pediatric intensive care, cancer treatment, cardiac catheterization, radiology, a blood bank, information resource center, and five operating rooms, all designed for children. So many children and their families got up like it was any other day. And unfortunately, something terrible has happened in their life. And through the modern technology that exists in this building and the specialty services that are here, we can really take care of whatever the community needs are for kids right here in this building without them having to travel. In addition to medical care, the new children's hospital is designed to fit a child's size and include the family as part of the team. Attention to comfort and design includes a private outdoor green space, meditation room, and special artistic elements. When they're going through this difficult period, it's very important for us to make it as comfortable for them as possible. And it's giving families a new home for hope. Uh, we are joined now with Patty Hart, who is the Director of Nursing. Um, tell us about this phrase that you guys have throughout this hospital. So I believe you're talking about patient and family centered care. Yes. What exactly does that mean? Patient and family centered care is really about how we provide care to our patients and their families. We know that in pediatrics as well as other places throughout the organization, it's at the hallmark to why children get better faster. We know that families who participate in the care um, 
actually speed up the recovery. And we know that it's important for our patients who are children at one of their most vulnerable times to have the families here and make them better. Um, so we include them in decision making, we include them in the care of the patient. Um, and we have siblings involved um, in all of the aspects of their care. And how do you guys plan on keeping the promise of that phrase? Well, in this state-of-the-art facility, we kept patient and family-centered care at the core of how we were building it. Mm -hmm. So families have um, the ability to sleep at the bedside. They have a zone in the room. So we designed the rooms with three specific zones, the patient zone, the family zone, and the work zone, mm -hmm. so that they really have a space of their own. And what is the work zone? So the work zone is where the, where the nurses and the physicians will be spending most of their time. Mm -hmm. um, it's where our medications will be administered. Okay. It's where all of the um, charting will be completed. Okay, and the other two zones? The patient zone is actually where the, the patient resides in the middle of the room. And um, we have the ability for the patients to play their video games. We have has state-of-the-art TVs where they can interact um, in the care. And then the family zone is actually where two family members can sleep at the bedside. Today in our facility, only one family member can stay at the bedside comfortably. Mm -hmm. Here it is um, a comfortable two parents staying at the bedside. All right, Patty, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Also want to bring in right now uh, Jessica Capitani, who is a member of the Family Advisory Council. And you had a part in uh, helping the design, helping to pick the design of this hospital. How does it feel now seeing it uh, complete? It's got to be an incredible feeling. It's so exciting. Uh, we were given a chance to be involved and have some ownership in this finished product. And this is where we bring our children uh, for their health and their happiness mm -hmm. and we, we're so excited to see the unveiling of this building. What was the process like? We were fortunate enough to be included on several committees, everything from choosing the artwork to the colors to the furniture selection in the room wow. and we were truly valued as committee members. Uh, they great. wanted the parental and family input and it was extremely rewarding. All right, thank you so much, we appreciate it. I got something special coming up. We are gonna head to the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. There are five operating rooms designed specifically for younger patients. We're gonna give you a behind the scenes tour coming up in just a minute. Children have always been able to put a smile on your face. Why not do something to put a smile on theirs? Support Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central PA as we make life a little brighter for children and their families. For more information on Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Pennsylvania, visit rmhc-centralpa.org. This is the primary hand progress a little bit under chemo. It's more than specialists working together. It's more than discovering promising treatments. It's more than treating every type of cancer. Hey, Mr. Whitcraft. It's hope. Offering the latest treatment while discovering the next. It's what we do. Good people. Great medicine. Penn State Hershey Cancer Institute. Penn State Hershey Neuroscience Institute offers treatments for brain tumors, stroke, brain and spinal cord injury, and more. We partner with Penn State Hershey Rehabilitation Hospital, specialist in inpatient stroke, spinal cord, and brain injury rehabilitation. Our comprehensive team of experts are consistently recognized for their management of complex disorders. Located right here in central Pennsylvania. So getting the best care is simple. Good people, great medicine. Penn State Hershey Neuroscience Institute. It's more than advanced trauma care. It's more than critical care for our tiniest patients. It's more than making seconds count when a heart attack strikes. It's commitment. Something we deliver one life at a time. It's all right, we've got you. It's why we're here. Good people, great medicine, Penn State Hershey.
admission to specialized medical care, young patients and visitors at the new Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital can spend some time in a meditation room or sit in a secluded rooftop garden. Inside, hallways are filled with beautiful images, including photographs and special lighting, all in an effort to create a peaceful space for healing. I'm joined now with Dr. Stephen Lucking, and he is the Chief of Pediatric Care here at the New Children's Hospital. Your colleagues and you have been looking forward to the opening of this hospital for some time now. Uh, what's the major differences between the old hospital versus this unit? Well, our physicians and staff have been highly committed to our primary mission which is the care of the critical, injured, uh, critical and injured child. Uh, our outcomes have been excellent. We're very proud of that. We're very thankful to now have a facility that matches that commitment. This facility will offer families enhanced space for comfort and privacy which uh, and support them through their child's critical illness. Uh, the family is an important part of the healing process, so supporting families supports healing. I know these rooms are designed so that the doctors and the nurses can look in and see the patients a lot easier. They can do it from outside versus coming inside, right? That's correct. Uh, the two things we have to balance in, in designing an intensive care unit is to provide more space and more privacy for families while at the same time providing visibility and access to the patient for the staff, so you balance uh, privacy and comfort for families with safety and that, that was the, uh, the thing we tried to strive for the best combination of those. Uh, we were able to go around the country and, and visit other children's hospitals and people were very willing to share their design features with us, their frustrations, their problems, their mistakes and uh, we're, we're one uh, community in this country caring for critically ill children so we're very willing to share things and we got a lot of good advice from people around the country. That's wonderful. Um, what are your favorite parts about this new unit? Well, we designed these, these rooms to provide ample space for all the technologies we need to bring to the bedside to care for the critically ill and injured child, while at the same time providing space for the family to spend, to be with their child throughout the entire illness. Uh, families will be more able to participate in the care of their child and the child's recovery. And we call this family-centered care, uh, and the new Children's Hospital will be more able to provide this and elevate our standard of care higher. Why is this setting um, so important for the members of the PICU team here? Well, we've, we've always been uh, providing we, our excellent care in a very cramped setting. And we know that families, when faced with a critical illness uh, of their child, are under tremendous stress. We've not been able to help them be comfortable and help them deal with that stress. They've been sort of cluttered in, in our open unit uh, again, up, up against other families with very little space. This will provide more, more uh, amenities for the family and more comfort for the family who are under a great deal of stress to begin with. Okay. And also this will allow, as I said before, families to spend more time at the bedside and in the room with their child continuously to be, to be more engaged every day, every minute with their child's care. Well this is an extremely scary time for the families and the children and, and that will really help to keep them together. Absolutely. A critical illness is devastating to a family and one of the, in addition to the fear over the child's, whether the child will survive or not, there's a helplessness families feel because uh, they go from being the primary provider and caregiver for their child to t at times thinking that their child's care is entirely in someone else's hands. And mm -hmm. family-centered care acknowledges that even when children are very ill, the family has an important role in decision-making and offering insights to their child that only they know and things like that, that, that they need to stay engaged in their child's care to feel that they're an important part of their child's care no matter how ill the child is. Mm -hmm. And part of that is supporting families' presence at the bedside, which the new hospital will do. What about the staff? Let's talk about them again briefly. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned how important it is and how beneficial it's going to be. Uh, how are you feeling about the excitement of this new facility opening? Well, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of this. I came here 22 years ago looking forward to this, and it's finally here now. Uh, it, it, as I said, it'll, it'll enhance what we've been trying to do all along. We, we felt that our outcomes are excellent, but this actually offers even more that we can really serve the families well and help the child's heal even better than we have. Uh, it's a challenge getting used to new surroundings. Uh, we'll have to re-engineer uh, our care model a little bit to accommodate the wider space and the visibility issues, but we're ready for the challenge because uh, this provides a, a better atmosphere for care, we think. Well, Dr. Stephen Lucking, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Coming up, we are going to take you on a tour of the operating room. 
We are now walking into one of the operating rooms here at the New Children's Hospital, joining with Dr. Robert Silly, who is the Chief of Pediatric Surgery. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here. Uh, talk about some of the cases that you will do here that can't and won't be done at other hospitals nearby. Well, first of all, Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital has been here for many years, and I and my colleagues currently are able to do things uh, in the many disciplines of pediatric surgery that are unique to central Pennsylvania. What this children's hospital, the new building here, gives us is the opportunity to have a facility that really matches the level of care that we've been providing for many years. And this facility is brand new, state of the art, and has all the latest bells and whistles that allow surgeons to do what they do what they do best. And what is the real difference between this and another operating room in another hospital specifically? Well, there's not a lot of difference in the four walls where we're standing. Mm -hmm. The real difference is for the experience of the patient and their families. Mm -hmm. The ability to be in a dedicated children's hospital where the entire experience is focused on children and children's needs is what's different about this place. From the time they come in the door till the time they leave, their entire hospital stay is now in an environment where everything is all about children. And that's what's different. Talk about these specific rooms. There are four of these operating rooms? No, there's actually six operating rooms here. There's going to be one which is a called a hybrid room where pediatric cardiac catheterization can be performed as well as emergency cardiac surgery procedures in that so-called hybrid room. Then there's five other rooms that have individual designation, one for pediatric heart surgery, two for our pediatric general surgery care, and others that'll be spread out among other children's surgeons, pediatric neurosurgery, pediatric orthopedics, pediatric ophthalmology, pediatric otolaryngology, urology, and plastic surgery. You got all that down quite well. <laughs> all right, well, we certainly appreciate your time, Dr. Robert Slilly, the uh, Chief of Pediatric Surgery. Uh, coming up next, we are gonna take you to the Pediatric Cancer Pavilion and also a place where anyone can go to get answers and information. Penn State Hershey Neuroscience Institute offers treatments for brain tumors, stroke, brain and spinal cord injury, and more. We partner with Penn State Hershey Rehabilitation Hospital, specialist in inpatient stroke, spinal cord, and brain injury rehabilitation. Our comprehensive team of experts are consistently recognized for their management of complex disorders. Located right here in central Pennsylvania, so getting the best care is simple. Good people, great medicine. Penn State Hershey Neuroscience Institute. It's more than specialists working together. It's more than discovering promising treatments. It's more than treating every type of cancer. Hey, Mr. Whitcraft. It's hope, offering the latest treatment while discovering the next. It's what we do. Good people, great medicine. Penn State Hershey Cancer Institute. When you think of it, children have always been able to put a smile on your face. Why not do something to put a smile on theirs? Support Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central PA as we make life a little brighter for children and their families. For more information on Ronald McDonald House Charities of Central Pennsylvania, visit rmhc-centralpa.org. It's more than advanced trauma care. It's more than critical care for our tiniest patients. It's more than making seconds count when a heart attack strikes. It's commitment. Something we deliver one life at a time. It's all right, we've got you. It's why we're here. Good people, great medicine, Penn State Hershey. of the new Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital took a lot of planning and a giant team. Construction crews put in more than 579,000 manpower hours. That would take one man working a 40-hour week about 298 years to achieve alone. 
Construction crews removed enough dirt to fill seven Olympic-sized swimming pools. There are more than 6,000 lights and 34,000 square feet of glass, enough glass to make more than 4,200 cars. We're in the Pediatric Cancer Pavilion right now, and I'm joined with Dr. Barbara Miller. Uh, explain what patients and parents go through when they are here for treatment. I think the diagnosis of cancer is one of the most traumatic experiences of a patient's life, be yes. they child, adult. Um, patients often are referred to us because either they found a mass or a mass is found on x-ray or their abnormal blood cell counts. And um, when they first come, our major goal is one to be absolutely sure about the diagnosis, mm -hmm. which often will require either a biopsy or a removal of a tumor, mm -hmm. um, and also to define the extent of the disease. We then enroll patients on protocols, many of them are uh, from the Children's Oncology Group, which is one of the big national groups which treat children with cancer. Mm -hmm. And all of the, basically the medical schools in the United States, or the majority of them, are members of this group and use the same protocols, which have allowed us really state-of-the-art and state-of-the-art treatments and very high cure rates. Um, after the diagnosis is made, we will then talk to the family in detail about what combination of treatment they need, with the treatment options being chemotherapy radiation therapy, and or surgery. In terms of treatment durations, they can be very different depending on the disease and its extent. It can be months, it can be more than a year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's very, very variable. I think um, in terms of where the treatment is given, we're very, very fortunate to have in this new pediatric ch ch children's pavilion, um, both an inpatient unit upstairs, and this is our outpatient unit. Um, children are treated in the inpatient unit if they need very prolonged infusions mm -hmm. um, or if they have complications of therapy. And they're treated in the outpatient unit here um, if their therapy can if it, their therapy can at all be given um, on the out, on the outpatient side. Um, I think one of the other needs that we pay a lot of attention to here are the emotional needs of the family because I think the, the medical needs are are obviously key. But for true success, you have to pay attention to the, out, for the outpatient needs, Absolutely. the emotional needs, and be very supportive. And we're very fortunate because the Four Diamonds Fund, of which its largest donor is Thon, um, has really helped us not only provide this outstanding medical care, but the emotional needs. It supports our social work staff, a psychologist, child life, and music therapy. And those things are so important to the children in terms of therapy. Um, I've had occasions where I've walked into the child, a child's room upstairs and their parents may not be there. And the child is most concerned to have me hear this music CD that they just burned um, rather than you know talk about their illness and it really helps them to get through this stressful time. All right, Dr. Miller, thank you so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. You mentioned Thon and we want to bring in someone who has a big deal, uh, a big part in that. Uh, this is Will Martin and you are responsible for Thon. You're the overall committee chair. Mm -hmm. Um, if you didn't know this, Thon raised $10 million to make this cancer pavilion come together. How does it feel to know that you're such a big part in that? Um, as the largest student-run philanthropy in the world, the entire Thon community is so excited for the opening of the new hospital. This commitment of $10 million was made in um, 2004, and about six years later, we fulfilled that commitment. And just to see something that was just an, a dream, now an actual physical, tangible building that the entire Thon community can celebrate is very exciting for us. Thon, when it was began in the 70s, we just wanted to support directly the patient care of the child, and now we are able to provide this brand new structure and this brand new unit that can really support those families and really provide the best care that they can have through their fight against pediatric cancer. So we're very excited to see this opening and see what um, future goals Tom will reach. All right, well, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. You. And now we are gonna be heading over to the Family Resource Center. Let's go. We are now in the gorgeous Family Resource Center and I'm joined with Debbie Fuhrer, who is, has been with the Children's Hospital now for four years. Um, tell me why the, the need for a Family Resource Center here in a Children's Hospital. Well, part of our family-centered culture here at Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital really partners our patients and families with the hospital team. Um, so having our Family Resource Center within the Children's Hospital allows them to empower themselves to educate themselves about the medical conditions, diagnoses, treatments that their child might be going through. So it's great that they can take a, a moment away from the bedside, come down here, look up things on the computer, find things um, that we our doctors have actually compiled for them so that they 
feel a little bit better about the conditions that their ch children are going through. And what's really interesting is that anybody can come and use these resources. Absolutely. It's open to the community. We want our community to come in and learn about nutrition, safety, and other things that their children or family might be going through. Do you think a lot of the people that come here will be using this? I mean, it's it's a great resource to have. Well, it's a we really try to make it a homey um, and welcoming environment. So I really think it's going to be Grand Central Station for our families to come and take a moment away from the bedside and just take a breather for themselves to connect with their loved ones on there on the internet um, and just hopefully learn a little bit more about the things their children are going through. All right, Debbie, thank you so much. Yeah. Connected to this room is actually the safety store. So we're going to head over there right now. Hi, Sue. Hey, welcome. Thank you for having me. This is Sue Versidlow, and she's here in the Safety Center. Important to note that it's not a store, it's a center. Yes, because what we want to do is we're going to have health educators that will be here every day through the week to be able to help families to learn about how to keep their kids and their families safe. The other thing is the store part is that we will have safety devices that the families can buy at discounts. So we're going to have bike helmets and gates and all other kinds of information and devices to help to keep families safe. What are we looking at? right here soon. Well this is a teaching seat. It actually has all the seatbelt systems are in a car. So wow. what we will be able to do is we're going to have samples of car seats. The families come and the families may say, well when can my baby go to the forward facing? When can my child ride in a booster seat? How can I keep my teen safe in a car? So we'll be able to show the families how to do that real time with a teaching seat. And that's obviously that's very important because you see a lot of trauma and accidents from cars. That's right. So cars for families. The best thing is put your seatbelt on and have your kids safely in the car. We find four out of five car seats aren't used correctly, so that's why this information is going to be crucial for every parent from when they're pregnant, with their new baby coming, all the way through teenagers and themselves. All right, so let's take a walk and see what else we got here. Well, this area is our home safety area. Mm -hmm. So we have a dollhouse that has um, hazards. There's a hundred hazards that are built into the dollhouse. Okay. We also have, this is a simulator where we can practice 911. Wow. So whenever you pick up the phone, and we want to mm -hmm. dial 911. The kids with their parents can learn about when you call 911 and why you call mm -hmm. and what's your emergency for fire, police, or EMS. So it'll be a way again for children and families to think about 911, how to be safe in the home. All right. And I think we have. What else do we have? What is this? Well, it's a tiny crib, but what we're doing, one of the things that we found is we have a lot of injuries with babies that suffocate because of safe sleep. And so we really want to get information to the families about, again, safe sleep and keeping the kids safe in the crib as well as other in the home. All right, Sue, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching and being on this tour through this marvelous new Penn State Hershey Children. Children's Hospital.